Sorry, it's it's been over two weeks, I'm pretty sure. Coming back at you with another voiceover. Not sorry about that, I like doing these now, I think. I really do occasionally come to the point where I just want to make baits and be quiet and focus on what I'm doing and enjoy the craft. Yeah, I come to that point a lot. I was at that point right here, gluing up this piece of paper, that wiggly glue stick right there onto this piece of wood. I was just wanting to enjoy gluing that piece of paper onto that wood. Just enjoy this moment on the bandsaw. You know what I mean. I guess that yearning to enjoy what I'm making kind of shows itself in this bait too because this isn't some crazy off the wall like, oh I made a truck lure or something like that. This is a bait fish. Well, it's like it borders between being a bait fish and not a bait fish. But it's like very applicable to being a swim bait, a white bass. Chip, I'm trying to do a voiceover right now. Please be quiet. Thank you. A white bass is a species that's foraged in a lot of different lakes. When it comes to big things in the water, looking for something to eat, that just, it gives you a good feeling. I feel like it's correct, fishing with a white bass swim bait. There's a special pattern I've been wanting to paint and use a special method to paint it and stuff. You'll see that later in the video. Probably the reason that prompted me to make this bait. Like making a special stencil. Special, special. Just because you say special a lot doesn't make it any more special. Anyway, thoroughly enjoyed taking my sweet time on this bait. Taking breaks and coming back to it and like not feeling pressed to finish it or anything. It turned out good. Loved the result. You'll see the result. This step right here where I'm cutting away and like perfectly cutting out those fins and stuff, completely unnecessary. I didn't need to do that. I could have just like cut around it and then on the bandsaw cut to the line, you know? Sometimes I still overlook goofy stuff like that and spend way too much time doing something unnecessary. Because look, you can just cut it out. It didn't matter if there was paper on the other side of that line. Isn't that silly? I went to the farmer's market today. <laughs> I bought some coffee that has cayenne pepper in it, super spicy. I drank it earlier. It changed my life. I thoroughly enjoy having spicy stuff in my coffee now, after one cup of that. I'm, I think I'm gonna look for other spicy coffees out there and see if I can step it up to like ghost pepper. Maybe step it down to jalapeno or something. Maybe jalapeno coffee is good, but cayenne coffee is good. Just letting everybody know. It might change your life too. I got a bar of charcoal soap. Cayenne coffee and charcoal soap. Charcoal soap. At the farmer's market. I should have got some plums too. What am I doing? Just drill that eye socket, just starting to carve. If I had one second to make an impulse decision on what's your favorite thing to do when it comes to lure making, probably right here. Right here where you're carving, like there's that little edge on the blocked out piece of wood that you have for the shape of your bait and you're carving that edge away. Right there, that's my favorite part. Specifically that, that first edge that you're taking away, favorite part. And then really close to that, it's like painting stuff. Some of the satisfying reveals and maskings and stenciling and stuff you can do with painting. It's just that one little part about carving beats all the painting. That's the way it goes. All right, we're getting close here to where I take a break from lure making in this video and I go out and test a bait. We're taking a break to go out and test this bad boy. You guys remember that fish and create bait that I caught a really good smallmouth on? I do. I owed him a lure for like months because of this. Apologies. Sometimes I'm a slow bait maker, but here it is. There is an imperfection in this bait. You see how the glass in the eye right there? You can't really see it. It's not very noticeable, but it's cracked because I dropped it right after the first clear coat and then I gave it two more. It's encased in there in a lot of thick clear coat. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's, it should be fine. 
color shift paint scheme. The top has aqua to green to gold. Some subtle fleshy pink tones throughout. Beautiful paint scheme, I think. He gave me two. Remember the toothy popper and the small mouth smasher. Oh, there's the big walleye. This caught my PB walleye, the spoonbill right here. See that big tooth mark in the top? I still remember that day. Fantastic day of fishing. Let's go test this bait out. Let's go see. Fish with it for a bit. Take a break. All right, let's see how she jiggies. Sits up, right? Whoa. Whoa. That, that is action city. It doesn't dive at all. It's a wake bait. What the heck? It doesn't dive whatsoever. I think on a full cast with a lot of line out, it goes maybe like six inches deep. Cast like a bullet. Yeah, I can get a little, like a tiny bit of depth on a full cast. Action city. I wasn't expecting that at all. Big round lip. You know, it's like as big and as round as the body is. We made a jerk wake. It's the middle of the day. I don't think anything's going to bite this. Fish on. Had to switch to a three inch prey bait June bug. And it's a bias. A lake bass. Like three inch prey baits, it's a fish will be free. There's another one. Didn't even let him fight. Off the bank. Kind of scared me. It's official again, same size. I don't think it's the same fish. <laughs> be free. Fish on. Let's get him here. Another bass. Biggest bass so far. On the three inch prey bait. Cats will come right up to the garage door and just torment Chip. Meow. He'll just sit there sniffing, like, puffing and puffing. Poor guy. Did you guys notice how thick this white bass is going to be? It's going to be some mass to this. There's a pretty flat, intentionally shaped head to this. You know what I'm motion in there? I'm silently trying to communicate what I can't verbalize right now about that flat spot on the head. You know what I mean. Maybe you don't.
I got a nice little notch started. That way the blade just slides right where it needs to be. That is pretty even. World class eyeballing right there. A Little bit of wiggle in each one of them to make them perfect when I glue up. Can't put the tail fin on yet. It's got an extra fat slot back there because it's gonna have a couple holes going through it and then pinned in from the side so it flaps a little bit. Flappy tail fin. It was hanging on by a grain, one grain. I'm gonna sand that joint back to that line. for added wiggle room. I'm about to drill lead holes for weight placement and I'm gonna try something I've never done on that back fin on the bottom there. I'm gonna pretend like there's not even a slot there. I'm gonna drill maybe two holes. One right there, definitely. Maybe another one back here. And then when I'm pouring lead, I have like a piece of metal or something that's like in the place of where this fin will be. Pour lead around it, fill up those holes, pull it out. There's still a slot there for the fin. Make it smooth. Maybe put the metal thing back in there, some mold release, put the filler in, pull it out, make it smooth. A lot of working around the slot is what I'm gonna be doing. Okay. We're just gonna have to drill back through lead. I need to make this hole deep. If you take your time and take little chunks out after you pour that lead, you can still have a pilot hole. It goes straight through the lead hole. Still super secure. Okay. Time for some 14 millimeter action. Same issue with that lead hole. But it's not an issue, it's no problem. My only concern is if that's enough holage or not. I think it might be. 10 millimeter. We're drilling on the slots now. That just felt wrong. That felt incorrect. It's nice and centered though. That's even. Even lead on both sides and it goes past the depth of the slot. I think I need to stuff another one in there. like such as. There's still established like walls of the slot. Still stays in there nicely. Yeah. Or not. Hopefully this is the new technique. This is a bit easier. Just kind of disregarding that that slot's even there. Drill the holes where the lead should be. Fill it up. That makes a lot more sense in my mind. We got a good sanding on that. It's smooth. I sanded two 322. Okay, that's gonna dry. So then it'll be ready to add weight and we can start testing. Main concern is that slottage with the holage. Let's hope it works. Traced out the shape of that fin.
This is onto a piece of copper that's the same shape, or sorry, thickness. So we can keep the slot and still pour lead in there. Look at that, I already explained all that. I just about re-explained all that. Unnecessary, that thing's gonna get hot when we pour the lead, but it's gonna like flash cure the lead around it and I can pull it out. Big moment, lead's hot. All right, that thing is full of lead. It's even on both sides of this fin, and that's hot. That copper is hot. Whew. It's wiggling a little bit. I should be able to get that out. It's just too hot to handle right now. Okay, hopefully there won't be a bunch of lead removal necessary in that section where the fin goes. There, we got all the fins on it except that one with the slot. And no hooks, but let's just see where we're at. Does it float? Does it sink? It sinks. Okay, definitely sinks. This water feels kind of goopy. Let's go drill out some lead really quick. It sank evenly. That's good to take note of. I'm gonna remove lead evenly. Okay, I tied some fishing line to it because I don't want to stick my hand in that water. Still sinks. It sinks so nicely though. It levels itself out. A little, little bit back heavy now. I'm gonna remove lead now. I didn't wanna to have to do this, but from those two. Okay, I like that. I want it to sink. Yeah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. It takes like a little over four seconds to hit the bottom of this tank. This is like 16 inches of water. That's like where it doesn't come to the surface when you retrieve. I think I want that. Moving on. Stuff some five minute epoxy with microspheres into those gaps where the slot is too. And hopefully that masking tape on that piece of copper releases that piece of copper from that slot. I'm like moving this once in a while, looking at it, making sure it's straight so that fin's straight down there. I don't know why that wouldn't work. This should work. Looking good. That was easy. And there is a slot. There is a slot that the fin fits into perfectly. Wow, that was easy. The baits weighed perfectly. Let's get this smooth. When I paint that, I'm gonna leave it pretty translucent. The spines will show up from both sides and make it look pretty natural, really random and natural. Starting with white, white bass. This is a white bass. Get the crusties off of there. I don't want that in my airbrush. Got the old HPCS with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle out, laying it on thick.
It's pretty much the entire reason I wanted to try out making a white bass swim bait. I wanted to burn my own pattern into a piece of paper and use it as a stencil with a wood burning tool. That's actually a soldering, variable temperature soldering setup. But yeah, I can use both sides to flip this bad boy over. Maybe it'll look like garbage, maybe it'll look great, who knows. I think I'm gonna have to focus on one section at a time. All right, we're gonna do one piece at a time too. <laughs> this isn't gonna be easy. I could tell just by the feel of it right there trying to place this on nicely. I'm gonna do this bottom part first. Try to keep the spray very localized. Should probably put some paint in the brush. That'd make for a solid start. I am not interested in overspray right now. I just had a little bit right there. It kind of made me angry. Not interested in that. No, thank you. That's not bad. Okay, that might have to serve as kind of like a guideline to put even more marks in. That's pretty, that's kind of sparse and not very well defined. I'm okay with that for a start. I can take that places with a brush. Yeah, I'm not exactly like, oh sweet, perfect. That's exactly what I needed. I feel like I'm just gonna need to make it work, you know? Expired blue. Keeping it kind of far away towards the top, middle. That stays kind of like a slate blue. Yeah. Nothing too intense. That could ruin the whole thing right now. Just a little bit on there. Ochre, injury ochre. Vascular violet. I'm spraying that from the top down. Kind of noticeable, the purple on the top. First clear coats going on. There's a lot of things to be careful for. I can't get it in slots, eye sockets. Slots and eye sockets. There's just a lot of slots. Can't get it in there. Pretty good. Lots of color, pearl white scales. Make the color a little less. It'll end up looking good, I think. I'm gonna go back and redefine all of those black lines once that clear coat is set to clear coat. I just called it a clear coat. Starting with some pearl white on the scales. All right, pinch of silver on the top. This silver could cover everything up too, so I need to keep it light, just a pinch. Scale reveal. That's a pretty simple one. Does the trick. I think if I tried to complicate it past that, it would just be too much. Lovely. 
It could probably look better if I hand painted each one of those lines instead of stenciled. I don't know. It gives it its own unique weird little look, I guess, which I'm fine with. Let's finish the detail on this thing. We're just squirting super glue into slots and installing fins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got some foil backing in that eye socket. Pupil. Now we need an iris. Starting the iris with a wicked yellow, straight yellow. Really thin line around the pupil. One millimeter line. All right, super thin line. Almost not even visible, but it's like, it'll be there once the foil's backing it. Now not as intense of a spray. And this is gonna fall a little bit outside of what we just did. Same color and everything, yellow. And that gives the iris like this natural depth look. It looks really good when you double it up like that. I just sprayed all the copper out of the brush and added some gold, and that's gonna finish this off. White bass have very yellow eyes, and that's just looking fantastic. Clear coat. Final layer of two-part epoxy clear coat. True coat. That's all I've used for years now. Good stuff. Gorgeous. Stuffed some pins through those holes. We got a nice restricted amount of movement on that tail fin, but it moves a little bit. And let that dry. White bass. I think it's reasonable to point out that these fins on the bottom right next to this treble hook, not ideal. That's gonna, without question, impede hookups. We got hard fins back here next to places that you want treble hooks impaling fish. That's never a good thing to have hard stuff around that. But this bait was not made in order to idealize hookup ratios. This was made specifically to just look like a white bass. Very poignant fins poking like usually fish in the water, they don't have their fins poking out so hard. Dare I say, erect. I shouldn't say that. But there we go. That's almost a yellow bass. I put quite a bit of yellow in that body. I made all the colors more than what they really are in real life, you know? Even with that wine color on the belly. Lots of reds, lots of yellows, lots of blues and purples. That's how I roll though. I like the colors. Okay. There, 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. Some heavy duty stuff. Supposed to be 100 degrees today. It's like seven o'clock right now. It's still kind of early. It's not 100 degrees yet. We better hurry before it is and try to catch a fish. All right. I just wanted to pass this bait by that spot on the way to another spot, but I've just determined that it works really good. Kind of surprised. I didn't think having all of this finage the side fins 
the pectoral fins, all that coming off of this bait would be doing it any favors whatsoever, but it, it's fine. It's good. Swims good. Didn't pop it off first cast. That's good. Can we get a fish first cast? Dude, it's got a flappy little action. Slow sink. It's somewhere between moderate and slow sink. It's not a perfect slow sink, but it stays under very nicely when you reel. Oh! Goodness, I hope you guys saw that. I just had a hit, but uh, oh my heart. Whew. I saw that bass take a peek, come up and miss. He didn't miss, he hit the bait, but he didn't hook up because, you know, the bait's the way that it is. We almost had a fish right there, fellas. We just about had one. <gasps> I just had another hit. I felt it. Dude. That's so sad. The hookup ratio is just like 0% on this bait. I don't know that for certain, but that's what I feel like right now. Great action though. You know, I need to get over not having absolutely every single detail. <gasps> Dude, I'm not kidding. I just had another hit. It's like super subtle little loops. Loops, what the heck was, what's that noise? Super subtle little hits. Oh man, but as I was saying, I need to get over not having every single little detail that's on the fish, on the bait, for the sake of the bait functioning correctly. It's a crippling bugaboo of mine. Swims like a champ. I think I'm gonna be tempted to go to the river if I don't make a decision right now not to go to the river with this. That's like making the decision to keep the bait versus lose the bait. Snag the bait. No river. Ooh. Had a fish on for a second. Maybe the tail fin was like just in its mouth or something. Unfortunately, that was the story of this bait. The entire, I don't know, 10 hours I put behind it. At least 10. Everything held up except the pectoral fins just came right off on like the third spot I went to. I absolutely blasted it into one, I remember, at the, uh, at the first pond that I went to. But the, the fins didn't come off when I did that. It was just on a random cast into the middle of the pond they came off, so. I went to most of the ponds I know. Every spot I went to, I got hits with no hookups, and that is the most annoying thing that can happen to you while you're fishing. You're getting a lot of hits. The fish are reacting to your bait. They're coming up and biting it. It's just made in a way where you can't get a hook point into a fish. That's rough, so I'm done. No more, please. I'm a bait maker. I can make a bait that hooks them up better. There's just too much of this and this. And when the pectoral fins were on, they were covering this hook up too. Sticky sharp hooks, just couldn't get a point into a fish. Had at least 20 strikes on that bait. Lesson learned, video's over. We'll get revenge next time. On to the next bait. Move both side. Move both side. I got a new bike. Getting into bike riding.